coffee first. <laughs> How long can you keep it this going? <laughs> Will the mug show up on stream? Uh, yes. Uh, the mugs are being shipped here, so once they finally get here, then it's when they'll ship out. Um, not before. The sh shirt sold all over my face. Oh, it oh wait, it is, isn't it? So you're saying that if someone buys a shirt, they're gonna cover up my face? <laughs> so they can troll? Hmm, how clever. How clever. Ah, we'll move it up there a little bit. On the top of my face, okay. Oh, thank you, Tucker, for buying a shirt. I appreciate that. Lovely color there. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Uh, we're going right back into the cutscene. So what happened was we got out of the out of the dark school world. Now we're back into what looked looked like our world, but there's still shadow creatures in there. And this girl talking to us about how they control her mind and stuff. It, it's weird. All right, so I gotta get in character. Okay, I gotta get in character. Anime girl. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, I'm in character. <laughs> Why couldn't you tell us the reason our previous efforts weren't good enough? What? What is there to hide? It's just... Something I don't want to remember, but... If you really want to know, I'll tell you. I'll tell you everything that happened. <laughs> Yuki's spirit gently took hold of Ayuma's hand, and in an instant, their two beings seemed to merge together into a single scissors. <laughs> What's going on? Shizaki! <laughs> it hurts! It hurts, Senpai! Ah! Didn't I pass out? So why am I fully aware right now? I can't see a thing, but I can't move. It's like that feeling you get when you're really tired. Sleep paralysis, I think. Uh, where? Why can't I move? Sachiko Shinzaki, the little girl in the red dress. The only survivor of the horrific murders that occurred in Heavenly Host Elementary School. Following the incident, Sachiko's family fled from the area, moving into another prefecture to escape the frightful memories that remained here. Strangely, however, I have been unable to locate any other records of the Shinzaki family. No matter where I look, the only information I can find about them comes from newspaper reports on the Heavenly Host murders. Granted, when an elementary school becomes the stage of a grisly incident such as this, perpetrated by none other than the principal's own son, it stands to reason that the scandal would serve as the primary focus for public interest, with all other details fading into the background. So of course, after learning that Sachiko was safe, further news of her whereabouts was largely ignored in favor of the media circus surrounding the school. But there was more to it than that. People weren't just uninterested in learning of Sachiko's history or whereabouts. There is simply no data to be had. I can't move my body because of sleep paralysis, I guess. But I can clearly see the room I'm in now. 
There's one boy and two girls in here, aside from myself, making that MMFF. I recognize them. They're the children who were killed in Heavenly Host during the incident, but they're still alive. Unfortunately, they're all bound hand and foot and just sprawled out on the floor, and so am I. That's the real reason I can't move. Oh, we gotta change the name of the game. Whoops. We switched games. Hold on. Corpse! Corpse party. <clears throat> weep, weep! Somebody please save me! <gasps> Gasp. <laughs> no, Senpai, stop! No, please, no! Blindfolded, I can't see a thing that's happening to me. And I and since my hands and feet are tied up, I can't remove the blindfold either. That just makes everything so much worse. I guess because it can't see, I begin to listen more intently. Frightened sobbing! The helpless cries of the other children echo off the walls of the cramped room. I'm so scared. It feels like my head's going to explode. What are you doing to me? Why am I blindfolded? Untie me. Cut the ropes. I want to be able to use my hands and feet. Please. Please! I kept begging and pleading, but all I heard in response from was the man walking away from me. In order. <laughs> parentheses and pound sign dollar sign parentheses exclamation point exclamation point I've never heard screaming like this before it was so punctual it's pure, primal terror, cutting through the air like a perfect so scene wave. It's the boy at the end. It feels like he's been screaming for an eternity. I think he's been killed right now. My God! What the hell is he doing to him? No one deserves this. Why isn't God? Why isn't God allowing him to fall unconscious so he doesn't have to suffer? It's been at least a half an hour now. Those inhuman screams of a young boy being raped, ripped apart from the inside have finally come to a halt.
without even a single moment of silence. The first one of the girls in line is the next to scream for her life. And the symphony goes on. Gurgle, hick, choke. God, I can't take any more of this. I'm losing my mind. Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. It's still going on? Come on, just die already. Die already. God, what is wrong with me? You know what? I don't care. Just get it over with and leave me in peace. Finally, after hearing a sound like a heavy object being dropped, the noises stopped. The room grew quiet again. Those footsteps are getting closer. All my hair is standing on end at this point. Everything below my stomach feels like it's frozen. Like I've suddenly been stricken with severe diarrhea. What? In order. God, why am I relieved by this silence? The kid next to me just died. Which means it's my turn now. <laughs> Someone's got me by the hair. They're pulling my head up. And taking off my blindfold, which means I get to see the face of my killer. The four missing children were found in a basement room at Heavenly Host Elementary School. Unused and officially sealed since the building's construction. When authorities entered, they were greeted with an inhumanly horrific sight. Based upon the evidence at hand, the murder weapon was determined to be a pair of large sewing scissors found in the hand of the accused. Investigators suspected some hesitation on the man's part. However, as the deceased victim's wounds did not indicate that his full strength had been used. Nonetheless, he had clearly acted with extreme malicious intent. The official cause of death for the three murdered children has been listed as scissors stabbing into face. I mean, loss of blood following removal of the tongue. But the actual state of the affairs is not so clinical, nor even so pleasant, if you can believe it. The following details have been extrapolated from the information previously unreleased to the to the public, or at least previously unreported by news outlets. These details of the crime are based on the official police testimony of Sachiko Sunisaki herself. Evidently, the victims were bound, blindfolded, and spaced out on the floor, then killed one by one. One was repeatedly stabbed in the abdomen with the aforementioned pair of scissors and had many of his internal organs forcibly dug out. His discarded innards were found partially buried beneath the, earth, the earthen floor of the basement room. Another stabbed in the head dozens upon dozens of times to such an extent that all flesh and bone above her jawline was essentially minced away. With my blindfold removed, the sight that appeared before me was more horrific than anything I could have possibly imagined. The person staring back at me, brandishing a blood-soaked pair of sewing scissors, wasn't the large man from earlier at all. He was one of the children. He was a little girl. Her face dyed red with the blood of her victims. She was staring intently at me with soulless gray eyes, and then... <laughs> she 
just started giggling. I was right. Oh, I I knew I I was acting the part. <laughs> snip, snap, snip, snap, snip, snap. The sound of the scissors on your bones. I'm no, sorry. <clears throat> She was opening and closing the bloody scissors over and over again. The sound kept echoing to the room. Then she took those dull, rusty, thoroughly blood-soaked blades and slowly brought them closer and closer to my left eye. <laughs> Why? Why is it you? <laughs> no! 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 The third victim was stabbed in the left eye of an in an indeterminate number of times until her eyeball became soup-like in consistency. She was eventually just left like that, slowly bleeding to death in horrific agony. Strangely, it was only after these mutilations had already been inflicted that the killer went back to and severed the victim's tongues. Learning the truth about these proceedings is shocking even to me. Makes it nearly impossible to accept the murderer of, as anything but a monster. And bearing witnesses to every moment of this was a seven-year-old girl named Sachiko. In many ways, she's the most pitiable and long-suffering of them all. But it was through her tearful, frightened testimony that Yoshakazai Yanagori was officially charged. Now, going back to the hunt for information on this unfortunate girl's whereabouts, it was her words that ultimately led to Yosha Yoshihaka's sentencing. Therefore, it comes as no real surprise that sensitive information obtained to her and her family would be withheld. That's to be expected. What's not expected, however, is that there's not even the slightest traces of information left to find. It's as if simply never existed. But I did find that the Dance Gaming Horror Month t-shirt was available now, and the link was right below the channel. Therefore, I cannot help but consider alternate possible explanations, and I remind you, this is mostly conjecture. But one question keeps nagging at the back of my mind. Was Yok was, was Yok Shikaz Yaganori really the murderer of the three victims? Is it possible this crime was not actually perpetrated by him at all? Think about it. In his final days, Yoshikazu was incapable of communicating with others through speech. And despite his childlike res reversion, he'd always been a per personable and friendly man. As the saying goes, he wouldn't have heard a fly. All his relatives, friends, and neighbors confirmed as much. Shocked that such a kindly man could commit these uh, unconscionable atrocities. He certainly had no motive for the crime either. There was nothing for him to gain from it. Then again, he may simply have lost his mind. Look at his father. It was around the same time that Principal Takamin Yenigori suddenly began speaking in tongues and acting in the most peculiar way. Not to mention scribbling incomprehensible gibberish all over his walls as if possessed. He seemed frightened of someone who would often be found crouching in the corner of his office, moaning and thrashing when visitors came by. If he could wind up in such a beleaguered state with no warning, perhaps too could his son. 
I believe that we're looking at a curse far more powerful than, any, than anything man could devise. From the time it opened its doors to the day it's closed them forever. Heavenly Host Elementary School's sealed basement room has existed for su for as some form of cursed ground. And to find the underlying cause, we must go back beyond the infamous kidnapping and murder incident. Back a whole 20 years. I believe I have found a clue that could shed some light on the situation. And it may be a far less fetched as the leads go, but it's a lead nonetheless. Regrettably, since Heavenly Host was not only closed down but demolished altogether, another school built in its place. It's no longer possible to investigate the basement room directly. But my protege has found what may be the next best thing a Horror Month mug, where the link is available below the channel. No, 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 sorry, that was not there. Uh, something that could make the impossible possible once more. Preparations are being made to pursue this even lead even now. Be sure not to miss the next installment. It may be the scoop of a lifetime. Continued in chapter 5. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Let's continue. What are these extra chapters? Uh, thank you, Rabbit's Put, for the 18 month resub. Well, things just got fucked up. As fucked up as things were, things got really fucked up. Then, what? Listen to those kids get murdered by the little girl. Uh, we're on the last chapter, guys. And then we're done with the game. Alright, so it got fucked up. That's why I probably get even more fucked up now. Yay! Who likes fucked up stories? Alright. So, like, for people that have beaten this before, does it get even more fucked up than... It already got, like, just way fucked up, right? Thank you for the new subs, Chewy Tooth, Rabbit Split, Unbearing Change, Two Carnage, Noth, Quidmobile, Hooded Assassin, Mista Mista, Harvick, Mullet Survivor. Yeah, we've been doing Horror Month for six years now. It's been a long time. Fifteen thousand viewers, Hal. I flaunt my body. Look, look at this. Look at this blatant, just like sexy man cleavage going on here. Shameless. I am shameless. I am sitting here sexually enticing you, and I'm sorry. I apologize. <coughs> okay. Get back into it. <coughs> I just want to, wanted to lose consciousness. The deepest part of my brain had become thoroughly clouded over and there were moments where I felt as though I could almost slip away. But the intense pain would always wrench me back to my senses before I could follow through. I would have welcomed even a momentary loss of consciousness with open arms, but any sort of respite from my suffering was plainly denied by, to me. The only possible escape was death. And death was certainly at hand, but it was taking an eternity to reach me. I was like a shellfish removed from its shell, fried in some hot butter, served a little marinara sauce and a little bit of lemon squeeze. I knew my fate, but only the chef could make the end come, and she was savoring my torment. Giggle, giggle. <laughs> 
<laughs> no. 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 The third victim was stabbed in the left eye an indeterminate number of times. <laughs> Until her eyeball became soup like in consistency, she was eventually just left like that slowly bleeding to death in horrible agony. <laughs> You're a tenacious one, aren't you? <laughs> It hurts! It hurts! Somebody help me! It all be over if you just die already, you know? <laughs> Gurgle moan. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there! Now that it's nice and mushy, let's see if we can scoop it out. <laughs> At colon pound sign. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Strangely, it was only after these mutilations had already been inflicted that the killer went back and severed the victim's tongues. <laughs> now open up and say, ah! <laughs> no! No, please, no! <laughs> oh, oh my, my. <laughs> My, you're really shaken. What's the matter? Stay silent. <laughs> uh, where are we going? Uh, this guy that's following us murdered his friend right here. That's why there's blood everywhere. And push him down the hole. Yuka. I wouldn't recommend going that way. Something dreadful happened downstairs just a moment ago. Huh? You really are shaking. Um, may I ask what your sister is like? Oh, certainly. She's a very cute little girl. Quite small, but with big, great big t eyes. I see. Her hair is short, and she's in junior high school. And as I recall, she was always wearing a blue schmuck. 